Got it. <clears throat> All right. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to recreate the bowl. So this will be sort of a review. I'm going to go a little bit faster than I did last time. Um, but if you have any questions, just let me know. So as you guys might have remembered, we're going to re we're going to change some of the topography of this cylinder so it's a little bit simpler um, and then I'm going to change the the height and the caps so the height I'm going to give it five and the caps I'm going to give it two um, you don't need the bowl for the apples but you might find that it's kind of it'll be nicer later on because we're going to put the apples in the bowl it'll look a little bit nicer so if you don't have the bowl with you um, it, feel free to follow along so, um, yeah, so th the main thing we were covering here was uh, the soft select tool. So um, I'm going to have my the face selection turned on. I'm going to go to this side view and select the top few faces like uh, that. Zach, you could show how to do that shortcut to keep selecting, starting from one row and then doing the... Or yeah, yeah. Sure I'll, um, I, want, we want, I was suggesting to Zach to show a little shortcut that he showed to Zoe on how to select, you know, let's let you start from like a bottom row and then you want to continue uh, yeah. in Maya and there is a little shortcut to do it that I actually did not know that he just um, showed a minute ago. Yeah, uh, and I'll actually give another example when we're doing the apple, but um, the, the idea here is if I want to just select the outer faces of this cylinder, um, I can try to select it like this, um, which, which does work in this case, but you're going to find situations where there's a lot of faces to select. So there's this shortcut that you can do when you go into the face selection mode. So you, you start with um, an initial selection, so this, inner, this interior ring right here. So let's say you have all these faces selected, and you want to select uh, the following three rows above it. Um, I'll give you guys a second to get to that point. So it's, we're just selecting the interior rings here. Um, the shortcut's pretty simple. Um, if you remember correctly, the shift key is what you hold down to select multiple faces. So with the shift key selected, or if you hold down the shift key and you press the period button, which is two keys to the left on the keyboard, um, it's going to select all of the faces that are touching what you just selected. So I'm going to do that again. Um, I have the inner ring. Um, I hold down shift and period. And every time you press period again, it's going to continue to select additional faces. So now if I do it one more time, I have all of these faces selected. And now I can do something with them. Like I said, um, later on when I'm doing the apple, you'll see a better example of why you would, might want to do this. Um, but that's a really, I use that shortcut a lot. Um, it's really useful. So now if I have my soft selection tool on, which if you remember, you, you can do it through the menus on, if you double click um, the resize, where's the, oh, it's on the right side. Um, if you double click the resize here, you can manually turn soft selection on in the menu, but I, I usually just prefer to press it with B because it's a little bit uh, quicker. Um, you hold down B to change the radius of your saw selection, and then you can make some adjustments here. So usually I actually start at the top of the bowl, and I do my saw selection like that. And then the other topic that uh, I covered is the extrude tool, which is another thing we're going to use when making this apple. Um, so just to cover again what um, the extrude tool does. So first of all, I, I selected this inner ring by double-clicking on it and um, with the resize tool I, I pulled it out. I noticed that some of you guys um, at this point you, uh, you didn't have the inner ring so you just or you, you didn't use the, the extrude pull tool so you just kind of um, you pulled down on the inner ring which works. I'll show you what, what I'm talking about. Um, you could just pull down like this um, but generally speaking this isn't really a good practice to do um, because you have this really thin line on your bowl. Um, so uh, what you really want to do is, is use this extrude tool here. Um, I believe you can also do command E. Um, yeah, or the yeah, command E would also do extrude. Um, 
Oops. So you want to make sure when you select the extrude tool that you have keep faces together on. Um, that was an issue some of you guys ran into. And if you do that, you should be able to just pull down on this bowl here. And so this was the point we were at uh, pretty much last class was we had this bowl. Um, the last step that we were doing, you can see it looks a lot nicer in our, in when you press three on the keyboard, that's a preview of what the smooth, the smoothing looks like. So um, if you want to confirm the smoothing, we're done with the bowl. We know we're not going to make any more changes. Then you can go into mesh and you can press, you can click on smooth and that actually applies the smoothing permanently to the bowl. If you export that bowl into Unity or another application, it's going to look exactly like that. Um, another thing I saw you guys, a, a couple of you guys were doing last time was you were modeling with the smoothing mode on. So as you can see here, um, let's just say I'm messing with the faces on this bowl um, and I have three selected and I do something like this. Um, this is generally not a good practice to do. You don't want to do any kind of actual modeling with the smoothing mode on because that's not actually what the bowl looks like. When I go in and I press three, um, sometimes when you're modeling in the smoothing mode, you're going to make changes that don't actually, that, that uh, don't apply to the actual bowl when it, um, as actual geometry. So just, just um, don't do too much modeling in this preview mode. What you want to do is make changes to the bowl or whatever you're modeling, and then you, you kind of press three to look at what it's supposed to look like, and then go back to the, the one mode. Anyway, um, so at this point, we have our bowl. We have it smoothed. Um, are there any questions before we move on to the apple? We're all good? So um, you might have your bowl, you might not. If you have the bowl, I would move it down or you can technically, I'm actually going to hide it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, this is something that's nice. If you have a lot of stuff in your scene and you don't want it there right now, um, you can select an object and then make sure you've got the channel box selected and click on layers. Um, create layer from selected. I think Enrica might have covered this. So if you've used Photoshop before, this is kind of a similar concept, but um, by clicking this V button, it'll, it's not deleting the bowl, it's just kind of hiding it. If you click on V again, it's there. So this is nice. Sometimes it, you don't want to have too much stuff in your scene. So at this point, we're ready to work on our Apple. Um, as I mentioned last time, um, before you model anything, it's always good to have reference images. So what I like to do, you know, you go into Firefox, make sure you type in apple fruit, because when I typed in apple, I just got the apple logo. Um, so there's a, there's a good amount of variation in what kind of apples we have here. Um, but one thing you'll kind of notice about apples, first of all, is that they kind of have, they're, they're thicker at the top than they are at the bottom. And also they have these little dimples at the bottom here. Um, so those are two things that we're going to try to... Um, achieve with our Apple. Um, so that's why it's always good to have something as a reference. Um, particularly this shape here is something we're going to want to uh, reference when we're making our Apple. So um, as I stated before, you always want to start with some kind of primitive. Um, in this case, it's pretty easy to see an Apple is pretty similar to a sphere. So you could start with honestly any primitive, but we're going to start with the sphere because it makes the most sense. Um, so here's our sphere. Um, I usually like to simplify this sphere a little bit. So if you go into the channel box and click polysphere like we did with the cylinder, we can change the subdivisions to 15. Um, we've got, it's just a little bit easier to work with now. So here we have a, a more simplified sphere. Um, and just like we did with the cylinder, we're going to use the soft selection tool. So. <laughs> Um, so, so uh, let's look back at our apple. Um, really what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make the top thicker. That's basically what we're going to do. So um, we're first going to select our faces. So if you press space and go into the side view, we can um, 
select the bottom few faces by first selecting the face selection tool and grabbing like the first four or five uh, uh, layers of faces here. Um, so you should have these selected now. I always like to double check everything. We're on, we've only selected the bottom faces. Um, then we can turn on our saw selection tool with by pressing B. Um, and you want to double check that the, the radius is correct. So hold down B like we did before, and you can kind of mess with this radius. Yeah, do you have a question? Um, yeah, can you show how to do the selecting the face again? Yeah. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. So you press space to go into this four view, and then with the mouse over this side view, you can press it again. Um, right click and have the face selection here. Did you get to that part? Yeah. Okay. So you should be able to just click, when you click and drag, it kind of creates this box. So just, you click and drag and highlight the portion of the sphere that you want. Um, and anything inside that box is going to get selected. Um, By the way, in the front and in the back. So when you're creating a marquee, like with this box yeah. called a marquee, like in Photoshop, it will take everything that that marquee touches. So, so if we're in 3D mode, it's the back and the front. So it's kind of important to keep that in mind. Yeah. Sometimes you want to select only the front, and then in that case, you want to really do a more click, click, click. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, um. but when I do that, like it doesn't highlight it. Let me come and help you. Okay. Um, are there any other questions so far? Um, so we can, this is a part where you can get a little bit more creative with how you want your apple to look. Um, I, the, the amount of um, soft selection that you want to do, it, it's really just up to how you want. So here, really what we're doing is we have the resize tool on and um, if you have soft selection on, you should notice that it's, it's kind of pulling at the apple like, like it's clay. If you have it turned off, it's not going to look like that. So make sure that it's on. You have to restart. It's my okay. it's not working. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because it does allow us to even select one thing. Mm -hmm. you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so sorry about that. But we're videoing everything, so you'll be able to see it again. Yeah, Maya sometimes, uh, guys, is if, if it misbehaves, like you cannot you go in face and so, try to select even one face and it doesn't do it. Unfortunately, you have to restart. It's kind of resets all the defaults. I mean, somehow it got corrupted. It's kind of like what happens with Photoshop and other, in other classes, I teach you how you can reset it. In this case, you have to restart to reset it. So at this point, um, if you've kind of messed around with the soft selection a little bit, you should have an apple that looks kind of similar like to this. Um, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. It's really up to you. I mean, an apple could technically just be a complete sphere. So um, it's, it's really just sort of about messing around with the soft selection, getting something that you like. So um, at this point, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to match this sort of divot at the top and bottom of the apple that you see. Um, so here, uh, we've got our face selected. So I have soft selection on, which I don't want. So make sure at this point that you've turned off soft selection. You're not going to have that orange radius that you usually see. Um, He's actually hitting B to enter right. and exit soft select in case you missed it. So unfortunately, there's not really an easy shortcut for just selecting the top faces here. You'll notice if I, if I try to drag and click all of them, there's a chance that it's actually selecting these faces at the bottom. This is just default with how Maya does 3D selection. The the best way I've noticed to do it is just to do it by hand. Yes, Trevor. There, um, I found a way to do the face selection on that. You yeah. The paint select tool on the top left on the bar. This right one. Left hand bar over there. This one. Oh, this one. Paint select and then you double click on it and you can change the radius. Oh, nice. I actually didn't know that. Oh, I didn't either. Thanks, Trevor. That's, That's cool. actually a great. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. So guys, did you catch it? You go on the toolbox on the left, and do you remember when I talked about the lasso tool earlier in my first lecture this morning? This at the beginning of class, sorry. And right below, I told you there's a paint select tool that I haven't used that. Those two, two I haven't used that much because they're more recent. And that paint select tool allows you to set a radius of selection. Now, does it select the bottom ones too, though? When you it, select it the actually bottom? doesn't. No. That's cool. Um, it did. You want to make sure, regardless. I'm going to show you. Uh, 
another way to do it. Um, just always double check that you're not selecting any other faces because that's really common in Maya. So yeah, the paint select tool is a great way to just kind of uh, select faces more quickly, especially if you're selecting a bunch of different faces. Um, another way you can do it with the just normal mouse mode is just holding down shift. You can hand select this inner ring. Um, it's a little bit tedious, but it makes sure that you're uh, only selecting the faces you want. Now, if you select, by the way, in a um, side, top, or front view, please jump to the perspective view and make sure that is, I, by accident, there isn't something selected that is deep below and you yeah. don't know about it. It means always keep one eye on the 3D side. Uh, not, don't stay in the 2D views only. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, we've got this inner ring selected uh, in the face mode. So all we really have to do at this point is you press W to go into the, the move tool. Um, and if we just pull down, um, it looks kind of weird in, in this setup, but if you press three, you'll notice that we're getting something a little bit more closer to what we want as our apple, um, with that sort of inner, uh, divot. So you just kind of keep pulling down. You kind of, check, like this is probably a good level, you don't want to pull down too much, um, go back to our uh, simplified model. So this is what we should be at at this point, um, something like this. So we're getting, we're getting a bit closer, you can kind of start to see it's starting to resemble an apple a little bit more. Um, I'm going to get started on the bottom part, which is almost exactly the same in execution, except we're going to pull up. So if you're a little bit behind, um, it's fine. So just, just to repeat myself, um, for the bottom, we're, we're doing the, almost the exact same thing. You select that inner ring. Um, you can use the paint tool if you want. And then... Now, for anybody that started Maya a long time ago, it might come easier to select the way Zach does because I, I, the paint tool wasn't available at the time when I started. But is, uh, the paint tool, we should start using that because it seems yeah. a lot faster. Especially for making uh, characters and things like that. Absolutely. Um, there's not, yeah. When we select the face of the character to extrude the nose and stuff like that, we'll definitely use that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll actually show an example that would be really good for the paint tool later on when we're adding a material to this apple. Um, so I've selected all the bottom faces in this inner ring, and I'm, I'm going to pull up like we did last time and double check. So that looks pretty good. Something like that. Um, does everyone seem to be at that point, or people, do they still need time, or? I think that they're actually pretty good. Okay. Okay. So, there's really two last components we're going to add to our apple. Um, there's the little dimples at the bottom and the stem. So, we're going to start with these dimples. Um, this is something that's pretty easy to do. We're going to look at the bottom of our apple here. Um, and this is a good example of using the edge tool. So, if you right-click and just click on or mouse over the edge. Here now we're just looking at the, the edges of the apple. So you'll notice um, with the bottoms of these apples, it's really, there's maybe about like four or five dimples that are kind of um, adjacent to each other. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna select um, two faces at a time. So here, if you'll look, I selected um, the two edges that are adjacent to this inner ring here. Um, and I'm going to shift and do that a couple more times. Um, don't, don't try to match exactly the edges I'm selecting. Really, just that matters is that you're kind of picking um, a couple edges that are kind of diagonal from each other, I guess. Um, it looks a little bit like a star or something like that. Um, the reason why I say it doesn't matter is just because it's going to look the same even if I, for example, don't have these edges selected. I have these ones. Um, apples are pretty not uniform when it comes to these little dimples here. 
So um, at this point, you have these four selected. Um, and similar to how we made that dimple on the bottom, with all these edges selected, we're just going to pull up just a little bit. Um, it looks pretty jagged here, but if you press 3, you'll notice that it's actually starting to look pretty similar to how an apple looks. Uh, I'm going to pull up a little bit more like that. Remember to just keep toggling between pressing 1 and 3 to see what it's going to eventually look like. I'm pretty happy with this at this point. Are there any questions with how this is working? Is this pretty straightforward? Now, um, I'm not going to do it with this apple, but I did notice like with some of them, there, there's a little bit of a dimple on the top. Um, I'm not too picky, but um, it is something you could do. The same way you did the dimple at the bottom. Yeah, the same way. It's a little bit <coughs> trickier. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for this example because uh, we're going to extrude. We're going to make a stem, and it can kind of mess with the um, when you're making this, the stem if you modify the top too much and make it too lumpy. So I'm going to keep it kind of simple for this, the purpose of this tutorial. Um, okay, so at this point, we're really close um, to what our apple wants to look like. Um, really, all that matters at this point is the stem. And in order to get the stem right, it actually uses a similar, the extrude technique similar to how we used the bowl um, in the last lecture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this inner ring. And if you'll remember, all you have to do to, to select this inner ring is just double click on it, and it should uh, select the whole thing. If it doesn't, um, you can always just do it by hand, but it's just a, it's nice to kind of get into a quicker workflow. Um, one thing I just realized is I, ha I actually have the smoothing preview on, so like I said, you always want to have that turned off when you're doing um, any kind of uh, modeling. So I'm going to start by pulling this ring a little bit smaller for the purpose of our stem. Um, second. So what Zach is doing is also preparing something to eventually extrude up to become the stem. Right. And this is a, a great example of of why the um, extrude tool is so important because if we just pull it up right now it's gonna it's gonna that doesn't look like a stem at all you're, you're messing with your geometry we're wanting to add geometry here um, so we're gonna use the extrude tool which if you remember correctly is here um, let me double check oh oops I actually made a little mistake here so I with the um, when you're using the extrude tool you actually want to be selecting faces so I, I pulled this ring in to make it smaller but um, before we use the extrude tool, we actually want to go into our face selection and just click on these faces or use yeah. use the paint tool. Otherwise, it was it was basically extruding the edges. Right, but which is it's fine, but it's definitely what we need here is we need the whole thing to come up, not just having the little skinny edges to come up. Yeah. So, take the time to select just these other edges. Um, double check that you haven't selected anything else. This is an example where if you have another face selected by accident. It's going to completely mess up your uh, your stem because you're going to extrude some random face. It's going to ruin your apple. So just make sure that you only have um, this inner ring selected. So um, at this point, similar to what I just said, I'm going to extrude here. Um, so you'll notice we, we're kind of running into an issue. First of all, remember, uh, keep faces together should be on. Um, when you click on the extrude tool, it's going to look at, um, it's going to try to assign, um, your compass is going to look a little bit offset. And it's because it's, it's kind of taking an average of where all the faces are to determine a direction. So if I pull up on this, it's actually going to, it's not too big of an issue here, but um, sometimes you, you just want to make sure that our compass is uh, pointed up in world space. So if you click on this little icon here, you should notice that your compass is now perpendicular to what the world is uh, and the ground plane. Anyway, so we've, we've turned on extrude and here we should be able to just pull up um, on our stem and you should start to see a stem form. Um, it's a little bit 
big, and so I'm actually gonna I'm gonna pull it inwards like this. So I made my outer ring a little bit too big. So what I'm gonna do, it's totally fine if you do that. Um, I would make the stem about this high, and I would the the idea of the stem was we're gonna keep extruding. So once you've kind of created this initial initial stem height here, we're gonna press extrude again, which I did. I just did Command E, but you could also press. If you did G, it would relaunch the last uh, extrude mm -hmm. and it would do it too. So Command yeah. E or G or just go back into that <laughs> at shelf. There's you always know? a million ways to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have our stem a little bit more similar to how we want. Um, and if we look back at our reference images, you know, if we want our, our apple to look a little bit more organic, we're actually going to want to kind of give it a little bit of a bend. Um, so once you've gotten to this point, um, I would actually extrude up and then a little bit in a, in a direction to your right or towards you. We just want to make it a little bit less, uh, we want to look a little bit more organic. So you can press the three tool right now and it's, we're getting pretty similar to, or we're getting, um, to a point where it's pretty similar to how an apple should look. We're go I'm going to do another extrude now just to, um, just to make the stem a little bit longer. So I did command E there, G, whatever you want. Um, I press W to, to recenter my compass, pull it in like that. So this is a pretty good height for our stem. Oops. Um, so we're, we're pretty close at this point. The, um, I'm going to do one more extrude. And the reason I'm going to do it is if you'll notice on um, Apples, this is like a really minute point, but there's just a little bit of a, it kind of flares out a little bit. So in order to achieve that, it's it's pretty simple. Um, we just do the extrude tool again. Um, click on this button to pull it up a little bit. Um, so you pull, you, you kind of take a little bit, uh, you, you pull up a little bit. I'm going to click on the resize tool, pressing R, and I'm just going to resize by clicking on the yellow cube a little bit and we get kind of a little bit of a flare, which you'll notice it's a little bit more prominent when we're in the smoothing mode, but that's just something to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I like how that looks. So at this point, we've got a pretty good looking apple. Um, the, the really the last step is we're going to want to um, add a material. And this is a little bit more complicated now because um, there's really two m different parts of the apple. There's the stem and there's the uh, like the body of the apple. So um, we're going to cover, you know, like we've, we've said a lot, we're going to cover materials a little bit better, but I'm going to show how you can create, you can apply two different materials to the same object. Um, so what we're going to do, there's, there's two ways we can do this. So um, we just learned about the paint selection tool which is pretty nice. Um, I'm not going to cover that for this purpose, but if you wanted to, you could just sort of hand paint the bottom part of our apple. But there's actually another way we can do this that is a little gives you a little bit more control. Um, Are you saying hand paint or hand select? Because that's, that's select. Sorry, hand select, yeah. yeah. You're not painting, really. Yeah. You're selecting, yeah. Yeah. Um, the way I like to do it is, um, so just to cover what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to select everything but this stem. Um, so we can start at the top or the bottom here. I'm trying to select the bottom of the apple. Um, actually, before we do that, we're going to create our materials. I just remembered that um, I wanted to cover that again, and, and it's, it's a little bit more organized. So before we actually select the faces of our apple, we're going to set up the two different materials that we're going to want to apply. And we do this in the Hypershade editor that we covered last time. So the easiest way to get there is, is in this uh, at the top of the screen here. You can also go into Windows, uh, Rendering Editor, and click on Hypershade. Now is a time, good time to save as well, guys, yeah. right? We got a good apple, let's save it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at this point you should have the Hypershade window open. Um, keep in mind we're trying to create two different materials. We want a red material for our apple, and we're going to want um, a brown material for our stem. Um, 
if you click on the Mayas tab here, you get our, our main materials here. So something that we covered last time is that there's different types of materials that kind of match different um, properties of objects. So really the main ones that you'll notice is like Fong and Fong E are a very shiny material and Lambert has more of a matte look. Um, and this is really something that it'll, it'll matter more later when we're doing actual rendering. So um, it doesn't, it's not going to affect the Apple too much, but um, in order to, you know, Apple's Apples are shiny. Um, we're going to want kind of a shinier look on the uh, the red part of the apple, and then for the stem, we're going to want it to be a little bit more matte. So I would select Fong or Fong E for our first material. Um, we're going to rename our material to be Apple Body. Something like that. Um, at this point, it's up to you. If you want to make a red apple or a green apple, I'm going to make mine red. Um, if you want to make, if you if you want to use one of the presets, you can by clicking this top red button, and then you can kind of move these sliders a little bit to maybe fit what you want. Something that's just a little bit not too bright. So that's our first color, um, and you'll see in our little dock over here, Apple Body is now part of our materials list. Um, so we're going to make one more material. You can do that by just double clicking on Lambert or, yeah, we're going to do Lambert for this purpose. Um, same thing. We're going to rename it to Apple Stem. And you're going to want to click select kind of a brownish color, which is kind of hard to do. It's kind of in between red and orange. There we go. Are there any questions so far? Or you guys had a good point? Cool. Um, so at this point, you should have two different materials. I'm actually going to make a third one just because I, I kind of want to have a green material as well. Um, oops. You don't have to do this. I just want to have both options. So. So you should have your materials at this point. So I just exited out of the Hypershade editor. You should be, uh, you shouldn't need the Hypershade editor anymore. So as I mentioned a few minutes ago, what we want to do is we want to select only uh, the stem or only the body. Um, you could start on either part of the apple. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to start with the body. So we're going to use the technique that I just covered earlier where first you select this inner ring. So I'm going to do that. So we want to um, select the additional faces on the rest of the body. So we're going to use the shortcut where you hold down shift and press period. And it's going to, the more times you press period, it's going to keep selecting every face that's touching what you've currently selected. And you're going to do that until you've selected everything up except for this stem. And I'm going to show you how you can do that with the stem as well. I mean, it's the same idea. You just select all these faces. And um, if you do it from the top, it's going to move downwards until you've only got the stem. OK. so. We have just the Apple body selected. Um, to apply a material, you hold down the right mouse button. You move your mouse all the way down. And it's actually the, the Mac dock is covering what we want. Oops. So it's assign existing material. And here it shows all the materials we've created. And you should have your Apple body or whatever you named it material. If you just click on that, you should see your your um, apple is now red or green. 
And you'll actually kind of notice there's a little bit of, it kind of shows you in the preview that it does look a little bit shiny. Um, it's something that's a lot more pronounced in the actual render, which we're not going to cover today, but um, it's just something a little bit nicer. Remember there's default lights already built into Maya that is what is creating those you know, reflections. Correct. So we're going to do the same thing for our stem. You just select the top faces. Um, something I forgot to mention is, you know, like, like I say every time is um, double check you haven't selected any other faces, especially if you're in a hurry, that can happen a lot. Looks like we're good. So I'm going to hold shift again and press period. So now we have um, our stem selected and we should be able to just do the same thing, except for with our apple stem. So, we've got a pretty good looking apple now. I'm going to duplicate this so I can make a green apple. Um, this is just because we're about to just do a little bit of set dressing, so I kind of like to have all of them. So if you didn't make a green material, that this is this doesn't really matter. Um, but now I have both my apples. So um, at this point, we're pretty we're pretty much done with the apple. Um, the last step is really just to apply that final smoothing um, to make it look nicer. So um, all we have to do that there is just click on mesh and click on smooth and we should now have a pretty apple. Um, at this point, the, the only thing I'm really going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to bring my bowl back in and I actually didn't apply a material to my bowl so I'm going to apply the same I'm going to actually just gonna apply um, a new material real quick. You could also just apply the same apple material if you wanted or, or the brown um, and if you want a, kind of a quick and dirty way to, to make a new material, what you, another way you can do it is if you right click and um, hold the mouse button and, and click assign new material, it's going to give you a pretty similar uh, set of instructions to what we did just earlier. So I can click on Maya and click on like, Fong and um, it just assigned a new material to this bowl. If you hold down over here and look at so this is the attribute editor that I mentioned last time. Remember yeah. when I said if you create a material, create something, the attribute editor allows you to change things. You know, basically yeah. edit the settings, the attributes of that yeah. material or that object. Right. And um, one thing that uh, you'll notice though, with, with so you, if you want to make an adjustment, say to your apple, you can go into the attribute editor and you can see apple body is listed as one of the materials. So if I were to say want it to be green, you could click on the green button and it should change it? I don't know why it didn't. Interesting. Usually that affects um, the different apple, like the different objects you have. I don't know if it's because I have multiple materials on it, but it, it is a way to make quick edits to um, your objects you have. So, yeah, what's up? How did you smooth the objects again? Yeah, so um, all you have to do is click on mesh and it should be one of the options. It's like seven options down. That is another tool, by the way, worth putting in that custom shelf. Yeah. The command shift or control shift uh, allows you to do that. Um, yeah, and while we're here, like one thing that um, is good to know is like you can keep smoothing an object, but you're going to notice that it doesn't actually make it look that much nicer, but it's actually making it look, There's a you're adding a lot more faces. So... One thing you never really want is an object like this, where it's just it's too many faces. I notice this sometimes when people are making characters is that they keep applying smoothing because they do it, you know, that they keep making changes and wanting to smooth again. So now, like, if I wanted to select some faces on my apple, it's it's really frustrating because like look how many different faces we have now. Um, so just make sure you you try to be really liberal when it comes to adding uh, geometry to your 
objects. And especially if you have characters and later on you want to add uh, bone structures inside and yeah. you have to kind of tell which verte vertex belong to which joint, you really don't want to have too many vertices. Yeah. And it, it's not something you can easily undo. Um, there is a way to reduce the number of faces on a mesh, but I've I always avoid the option because it always makes your, your object look really weird. It's actually a nightmare. Uh, there is this reduce command that I don't yeah. think anybody that has played with Maya for years would tell you, just stay away from it. I mean, really, yeah. last resort if you really, really need it. Yeah. So um, at this point, you can really kind of do this on like however you want to do it. But uh, when it comes to just decorating this, if you don't want to, you don't have to. But um, I'm going to make these apples a little bit smaller, and I'm going to just kind of place them in the bowl. Um, the only other thing that I would mention with, if you wanted to, let's just say that I'm trying to do a render. Um, so I'm going to put them in the bowl how I want them, and then maybe you click on E and sort of offset them a little bit. And then um, if you select your apple and press Command D, I think that Enrique has covered this before, but that just copied um, and pasted those apples. So if you'll actually see in the outliner, I had piece view one and two, command D, create some more. Three and four. Yeah, three and four. So if I, it, you, sometimes you don't realize it because it puts them exactly where the, uh, the original objects were. But if I select the move tool and move them, you'll see that I just created two more apples. So now I can place those some, oops, I can place those however I want. So you can just keep doing that until you kind of have this scene looking how you want. Lots of apples. Yeah, it's you know like a still life scene. Um, unfortunately, I would show you what like a quick render of what this would look like, but we don't really have um, Arnold installed yet. Um, and also, we haven't really finagled with lights. That is, yeah. the rendering would be pretty disappointing. And I want you the yeah. first time you render to That's true. be having something cool. It right? can, it's really nice to finally see because I can I can show you that like I don't know when you look at this scene, it looks still pretty simple because the lighting really makes a big difference um, in a setup like this. But yeah, that's pretty much um, our scene, you know. Beautiful. Nice Got our bowl. nice bowl of apples. Nice bowl of apples. <laughs> Sounds great.